hear everything you're gonna say about that guy. Who is it? What guy? <laughs> is this guy the most yeah. handsome Uki in the world? Yeah, um, tell him what's up with the Happy Pill channel. Tell him what's up with the Happy, doing Happy Pill, best gym, best YouTube, best Instagram, best Jiu Jitsu. Follow, like, subscribe, all that. You won't regret it. Where is he? Oh. Let's start with passing. Simple drill. Uh, you can sprawl pass, you can do a two behind one, whatever way you want. You want to come here, you want to kick one leg out, you end up like this, right? Two behind one. If you don't know how to sprawl, don't tend to worry about it. There's a lot of different ways. I know you can use this hand to grab this foot on the far side if you want to. I just don't recommend that because with gi it's different because you have fabric holds. But without gi, you leave this arm exposed and he starts pulling on this arm and you start taking it. I'm going to ask you to drill it backwards, okay? And I'll explain what I mean by this. Normally, when you end up two behind one, you've either sprawled and you landed like this, right? And you're trying your best to put your leg over, either hook it with this kneecap to kneecap, and now as I pull this kneecap down, I flip my hips, and now I make a wedge under the back hip. That's what normally you do, right? Or you use your elbow, one of two ways, right? You're like this, and you wedge your elbow down, you push it down, and now you hook it, and now you do the same thing. But what ends up happening is that you get here, you're like this, two behind one, and this thing is so high up, and he knows that you're trying to get over it, and he's doing his best to try to recover, okay? And what ends up happening is that you take this position, and let's just talk about this mechanically. You start putting all the weight on this kneecap because you start lifting this leg up, and everything is balanced on the other leg. And I'm not going to say you're going to get reversed, but what's going to happen is he's going to give you a little kazushi and pop you, and now you're going to land, he's going to lift you like this, and now you're going to land like this, and you're back in this right here, right? And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to ask you to do two things at this point, and they're very important that you, present, you pay attention to them. When you go the other way with the hip, right now this hip was up here hooking, right? But I'm going to actually lay the other way. I'm going to lay like this. And now there's a danger here, because now that arm's by itself, Okay. So, like, you, I don't really play chess, but I know in chess, like, sometimes you expose pawns or something like that, whatever it is. I don't know these names of these pieces. I tell you, boy, I was in Colombia, and Vernon tried to, people know Vernon, he wants to try to teach me chess, and he was like, dude, I don't want to learn this game. Like, and then whatever, he had all this way to play it, and as we were learning, I was like, dude, <laughs> and too many pieces to remember. I'd rather play BJJ. So we're like this, right? I go this way, okay? And I left that arm exposed, okay? So there are two things that matter right now. I'm the more athletic one, okay? Because I am up and I have mobility of this leg, okay? My head position is crucial right now. In order for him to take this arm, he's got to keep shrimping the hip out to take this arm, okay? So my head position, when we talk about quadrants, there's this quadrant, this, 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 right? There's three quadrants. My head position is on this far side pictorial driving, Okay, so my head position's like this. Okay, I never look down because I don't want the back of my head exposed where my arm is left by itself. So when I've landed like this, my head position is this in this far side quadrant. This leg at this point now, because I was like this, fighting, fighting to get by, right? Now this leg, as he shrimps, I keep pushing into him because I'm not gonna let him escape and come out on me so that he can take this arm, so I don't stop driving. Now, this leg, right now, Ethan isn't very much taller than me, so this is easy to pass. I could easily just walk around and come through, okay? But sometimes they're very tall, and that leg might be up here, okay? So if you remember when I was like this, right? Elbow came in, right? Or leg stepped over and hooked. Either way, it doesn't matter because I'm like this, but I know if I lift up, he's going he's gonna to pop me up and I'm going to be like this, right? So I go the other way. I hit the hip line down, but now we have this hand here, okay? I'm going to ask this to look this way so people can see. This hand was right here. All I'm going to do is slide my hip up and bring this thigh to, ch to his lap muscle. So I've slid in front of my, his hip line and I've driven this and connected this. So now we're like this. There's something that's critical right now because in order for me to finish off the submission and attack him, I could spin around the top, but I'm gonna say that this was blocking, right? Because two things will happen now also. 
is that I'm just going to tell you like to problem solve it so you understand. When I'm like this and I've sprawled out, they'll block your they'll block your knee line. So they'll go like this, and now you're like this, trying to step over. Hand comes through, hip comes through, makes this attachment now. Now we're like this. I never want to feel that there's a disconnection of our hips right here. So my first reaction is to bridge, I mean drive him this way, so he either goes supine or his other shoulder comes off the mat. So right now he's like this at a 45. I want to drive him at this point. So he was blocking my line. I can either grab his elbow, I can grab his face. Either one doesn't matter. So as I drive, I pick him up. So now there's no disconnection as far as side hips, so now I can square it back up. I'll do it again. Everything exactly the same. Aiden was like this, plays out a lot of different ways. I drove through him, like, and now I'm like this, trying to step over. And I realize he's trying to pick this up and he's not letting me through. Hand comes through. Push this down, slide in front. Now I've connected at this point. Now I'm going to drive it this way because I don't want this disconnection. If I do this now, Ethan will re-slide his kneecap in and recover. So do not lose this disconnection. You've gotten in front of the kneecap, maintain it. You're here at this point. So my first reaction is to push and push and push. I have the athletic leg. So now there's never going to be a disconnection of this hip line. So now I square this back up and here we are. One more time. And we're going to combo that because that combos, if you get good at that, and there's about 15 to 25 combos on that position, depending on where the knee line is, you pass instantly. Like they won't even understand the pass at that point. You're like this, I kick out, I'm here, I kick out, I'm like this, I'm trying to step over, he's trying to push me down. So I collapse the hip. Now I'm in front, my hand's in front of the kneecap. I start driving through, I've connected. This hand can play different angles. It can play here at the elbow line. I can go straight to the face. As soon as I come through, if I've caught the uh, chin line, I start driving him up. I reconnect the hip. One more time. You can sprawl. You can do any one of them. I sprawl. I've landed like this. I'm trying to step over. He's pushing me down. I slide out. I'm like this. I know my hand's in danger. There's never a disconnection on the top side quadrant. I've made my position in front of the kneecap. I slide through and make a connection. We're like this. I'm starting to drive with my back leg. As I make the connection, I get him supine. I square back up. Let's do it. My whole goal is just to get in front of this. That's the whole goal to passing. These are his shields, right? Knee shield, all that stuff, guard recovery. My whole goal is just to get by here. If I can get by there, then my percentages get super high. I'm like this, and I just lay down like this, and I went, man, I can't get over this leg. I'm trying to get over this leg, and every time I do that, he off-balances me, and then I have to sprawl out, and he recovers. So I went like this. <clears throat> okay, and now, I'm, if he does nothing else, because I see some people just going and just like, he's driving this kneecap in there like that, right? So try your best when you drill it to give you a realistic feel, because this hand's not going to be here a lot of times. Because if I position my head here, he's going to counter back and start trying to push me down, right? He's going to counter back like this and trying to shield me down and trying to slide me back down, right? Because he's not going to take my arm at this point because I'm controlling the sector. So he'll pummel in it, yeah. And now I'm going like this. I'm in front of that kneecap, right? So try to make it as realistic as you can so that you have the feel and the reflexes off of that move, right? Okay. So we're like this. I'm going to ask you to do it a little bit different this time, right? For the advanced player, if you have a good partner, you're going to mix the two up. So for a second, let me just stop before I, I change the patterns, right? You're like this, and now you've slid this hard, and he realizes that he's trying to jam up like this because maybe he's six foot four and you're five foot five, and he's like this. So I'm going to go right back. So I drove it down, now it's exposed, and I'm going like this, and he's so, and I'm like this now. I just dropped that wedge in there. And now, the only thing I care about is getting my balance back on this kneecap. So now, as I drove this in, I've re-squared my kneecap up so that now I'm light to use this leg again. I'm not gonna re-square it totally underneath there. I just wanna rebalance myself on this kneecap so that I can go back to hooking with my leg to flip my hip lines. Okay, I hope that made sense, right? So you're like this, 
right? You went down on here and you're like this, and now he's dry and you're trying to stop. I can't, I can't get over again, right? He's trying to push me down, but I made my wedge up and now he's pushing me back down. I'm like this. I re-squared up because potentially, and we're gonna go a little bit further down the chain for a second. He lost the position on this knee line, so he's gonna start pushing on my shoulders. And now I have to come up because I'm not gonna beat these frames because they're gonna lock in and I can't collapse them. So now I have to go back to that frog hop. And we're not gonna do this yet. I'm just trying to explain a bigger picture to you. I just counter, he countered back again. So I gotta counter back, right? We're going piece for piece, okay? I own position right now, I'm not relinquishing position, and I'm not gonna get, go back to that guard in there and then start having to pass this thing all the way over again. So I laid like this, I'm like this, right? I'm trying to step over, and I was trying to push this down, but he's jamming it up and he's sliding me back down. So I made my wedge, and right now, I'm gonna get slid down at this point because he's probably on my shoulders and he's sliding me down. So I wanna get back on this kneecap, right? And I wanna rebalance myself on this knee. So I made my wedge and I jam it back up. I'm still two behind one, okay? So now I've got position again that I'm athletic again. So we're like this. We're gonna keep the pattern right here and just do that flip that we did before. So this is how we did it in the very beginning when I was explaining, but we didn't really do it. I was just explaining. So I re-square up that I hook. And now I'm gonna flip my knee lines again, but I'm gonna lay on this hip now. So as I square back over, I flip my hips, and now I'm back in the position again where I'm in thigh control bringing it back. So you're going further down the chain. I've explained what the piece is, how they exchange right now, right? Okay, you did everything, I got a counter. You're bigger, you're stronger, you're faster, you're all these great things, okay? So I have to play by skill and technique. As Mr. John Danaher famously said, technique is your sword. I didn't understand that for many years, but I understand it now, thanks to him. So I'm like this at this point. I've come through, I've realized I can't get by. He's trying to stop me and I go this way. Now I'm trying to get over and he's pushing me down. So I've gotten my wedge on the inside, I square my hip line up, now I have the free leg again, right? So now I'm gonna hook this kneecap and flip my hips. Partner on the bottom has to give him a realistic feel. What's your realistic feel? At one point you were thinking that you could take this arm on me. I get it, and, but then you realize that you, I countered back. I, I had one position in my head position here. I had my athletic leg that lined up with the head position. So no matter how much you shrimp, I can follow you faster than you can get out. So I'm not gonna lose position on the, on the shrimp and I'm not gonna get my arm taken. I'll just keep following you. If we gotta end up in, uh, on 30th and 7th, that's where we end up. But I'm not gonna stop following you, okay? So I'm like this at this point, and I just slid like this. You can start right from here if you want, right? And remember, he was trying to take my arm in the beginning. He's trying to see if he can, but I'm driving forward, and he realizes, boy, if he keeps trying to take this arm, and he's blocking, I'm about to take the man to this pocket here. So he counters back. He does two things. He brings his leg high, and he counters back with his frame because he wants to push me back down. But I'm like this, getting slid down, so I make my wedge. And now what am I gonna do at this point? I'm gonna re-square this kneecap and rebalance myself on the bottom kneecap. So I'm getting slid up, and now I re-square myself up. We could always go in different patterns, but for now, I'm gonna ask you to hook. If I was, I wanna just point something out to you right now where I am at this point. I am not gonna lose position of this leg. If I have to go vertical, I'll go vertical to release the frames on me. But right now, I'm not asking you to do this. But I want to put this in your head as a bigger picture. I'm like this at this point. I re-squared my balance back up on here. And I'm like down here. And I go, what the hell would this? I can't even get over this leg. So now, potentially, I'm like this at this point. I can always, if I can't, get over this, right? I've re-squared this guy up. I can re-drop them and, and square him high to go back to this leg that we had been taking leg locks. Or I can re-square this leg up and rebalance him that I go frog hopping and then come vertical on here and pass it again. I'm not gonna ask you to go so deep in the chain because we, we're countering so fast at this point that when you watch it, like uh, you watch Gordon, one of the uh, younger kids that Johnny teaches do it, you just go, it just seemed like this, like, oh yeah, he passed. Man, you don't understand how deep that chain was and how many sequences just got exchanged on that. It just looks like, oh, I got by. Uh, he countered so many times that within like this, tw like literally like a 12 second clip, there was about six exchanges right now, positionally, 
Okay? So I went out sideways at that, right? Pretty simple. I was trying to do the one I just showed, but it's not happening for me. I'm getting slid down because he countered back with the far side. So I realized I'm gonna get pushed down because I'm slid I'm sitting on my hip. Before he was taking this, before he was blocking here, so I was ready to counter. But now it's changed. He's taking this hand and he wants to slide me down. Right? And he wants to jam this leg through or he wants to take this arm in an umaplata and now I've lost position up here because this hand countered back and now I'm getting slid down. I go, oh my God, I'm about to lose this position. Now this arm's going to stay exposed. So I got to re-counter back also. So I square back up on the bottom leg. I rebalance myself on the bottom leg. So this is where we're going to go. I told you this whole long story of how the game will play within a second or two of, of combos. You're like this now. So now when I re-squared, I had this wedge. So I'm going to say don't. We're going to hook the loud leg now. The moment I hook it, I drive it into this pocket and I flip my hips. So I'm driving just like that to release the back leg. So now my first reaction is same position for people that are just starting now. I never feel, I never lose contact between us. I should feel a connection and some form of his skin touching me in this pocket right now. His whole goal is to go knee, elbow, escape. From the very beginning when they first came here, that's what they taught them, right? So he wants to put these shins back between us. So when I flip my hips, I have connection down low. I don't release that leg until a replacement comes. This leg that's in here right now, secondary leg comes in, now I release the hip. Do not release early, you will get your guard, uh, you'll be back in guard every single time. Let's part up and do it. This is what happened, I'm like this, and he's gonna do move number one, right? Danny's over here like this, trying to take this arm. And now he's blocking here, right? And now Sly's gonna slide in through that pocket. Excellent, square back up. Excellent, perfect. Do everything exactly the same. Exactly the same, right? Don't, mish, don't mishmash moves. You're like this. But now Danny just realized, oh God, I'm about to get past. So I start putting my hand here and here. What's the purpose of you pushing here? You don't reach it anymore, right? If the bottom player, like if you keep pushing here, He's gonna pass it with the first one. So now he just went to the closest thing again and he's pushing you down. So now wedge happens, rebalance, right? And now to use the free leg to pass. Excellent, right? Makes sense, right? One more time, right? So you see how the chest pieces move and they happen really quick. He's like this, first move, first move. Yep, squared it back up, excellent. He saw the pocket opening, he inserted himself, right? Second move. He hits the scroll, and now Dan just realized he's pushing those shoulders down like a madman. Side makes the wedge. That's okay. He decided not to do the wedge. <laughs> uh, listen, the only reason, listen, you could do the hand. I totally get it. Um, I'd rather you stay tight and compact, right? You're strong like this, right? So I don't, I'd rather not this because I don't want to get elbows pulled. I don't want any of that to happen, okay? So I, no, nothing wrong with that. You can use your hand but I prefer to use your elbows so that everything's tight and compressed. If I'm like this, I am not mechanically, you is what we want. One more time, right? Like this, perfect. Danny's starting to push him down, right? Side made his wedge. He squared up on the balancing, caught it, stepped it over. Excellent, perfect. Where, where are we time more? Okay, let's, I wanna show you guys something. You're like, yeah, second. You're like this and you just laid down. This is gonna happen because uh, Johnny just asked this question. You're like this, and you did everything exactly. You made this wedge, I rebalanced my bottom, I'm super tight, right? And now I'm coming over like this, and I'm going, damn, I wanna get by this kneecap, right? And this is gonna happen right now, uh, when Sai did it before, he made this wedge, he hooked this, and then he spun this, and this arm stays here, right? But sometimes that hand's gonna be over there, and there's nothing you could do about it. You just have to add more pieces to the chest mat. You're like this, right? And I'm about to get slid down and I countered back and he countered back and now we're changing all these pieces back for back. And I'm like this and then I come here and I'm like, damn, I can't do anything about this, right? I could try, but I'm like, Phew, man, I got an opportunity to get by this knee line and I go through this pocket with this hand, right? I don't know how deep I'm getting pushed so I slide this guy through and I'm like this, right? And now we got an issue going on that these hands are behind me, right? And now I'm gonna start getting pushed down and he's gonna slide out on me, okay? That's what's gonna happen. 
so we're gonna we're gonna run out of time uh, tonight. I'll recapture it again, and then we'll we'll add to it. And I promise to go next week with it. But remember, I slid my hand through here, and now I got an issue with the hands behind me that he's pushing me down. Okay, I'm gonna take this hand and wedge it across his belly line. Okay. And I'm going to fight from my knee line position in front of my arm, okay? I'm going to try to, Cynthia, can you come on this side for me? You're like this, right? And I just stepped over. I was trying to bum around. So I took my chances. I went, huh, right? So my hand on this side makes this wedge because potentially a couple of things are going to happen now. Danny could shrimp the hip line out, but I collapsed the knee to step over and flip it back the other way. Right? But that's not what we're going to do. So I want you to understand why I fought for this position on this line. Potentially also this hand, this leg can come in and now we're right back on that heel hook. Right? Right back on the heel hook. I'm not going to show that one because we'll run out of time. But what I want you to understand is I got a problem right now with those hands behind me. So I slid through and I was like this. So my first reaction is to make this wedge because I'm not going to lift up and I'm not going to bring my body up. I'm going to slide my hip lines out and put my knee line in there because as Danny pushes me, all I'm going to do is go vertical because now the hands don't reach me. And at any point, if even if he did, I got rebalancing and I'm on both knees that can flip it this way or drive it this way. So my hand position when they're behind me is going to go across the belly line because potentially you may end up with this hand, right, like this, where I collapse it. I may end up like this, where I take this. I may end up like this, where I bring this knee line up and I come up and release. But my hand position right now is what I care about. I'd like you to go vertical, because that's the hardest one. And I don't know how he's going to react. I don't know how hard his shrimp's going to come out. I don't know if he knows how to shrimp, right? He may be taught how to shrimp back and forth in the room like we did the other day. That Might as well do cartwheels, but, right, so... So he might take his hip line out quickly on me. So that would mean that I'd come here. He may not. He may just try to jam this guy through. So I'm going to take this guy, okay? But on this one, I'm like this. Put my hand is it, and I've slid through and I go, okay, I'm up, I'm back, right? My first reaction is just to clear these arms and come right back. I'm here again. I stepped over, I collapsed. I put my knee line up. I'm up, I'm back, right? So I got rid of your hands very quickly. And if you slid me down, I'll go back down to that leg again, right? So like, we got about, like, we're going to run out of time, guys. Um, we're going to start rolling now. Uh, but uh, well, on Monday, we'll capture that again. We'll add more stuff, okay? So you got a, an idea of why we're doing what we're doing, how we're comboing them up, and then we'll mix them all up. And we'll keep attacking those legs repeatedly when they come in and jam them through, okay, guys? Let's partner up here. Nike. <laughs> Congratulations, young ladies. Very good work. Very, very good work. Yeah, very good work. Every time I turn around, she's in a war. Yeah, she literally is in a war every time I turn around. Thank you very much. Very good job.